Hello. My name is Abie Ibiabale, and I was asked by Father Gary and Troy to give a short reflection on Ash Wednesday. So Ash Wednesday, ashes, they aren't just a thing we put on on Ash Wednesday to remind us of our sin. Ashes are present everywhere. Just look at the news. Within this past year, you can see ashes in the tragic shootings of Mike Brown, Tamir Rice, and the death of Eric Garner, and so many other cases across the country. We can see ashes in the story of the 43 students in Iguala, Mexico, who were kidnapped and passed away. This past week, in the midst of exams, we heard a story about three Muslim students being shot at UNC. Students like me and like many of you. You can see ashes across the world with the terror that organizations like Boko Haram and ISIS spread and the atrocity and the senseless killing that goes on. But we don't even have to look across the world or even look at death. I look around and see ashes in our society when so many have so little to live off of. I see ashes in the medical school I attend and the hospital when patients come in with life-changing diseases and struggle to understand what it means for their lives. One particular story comes to mind. In psychiatry class, we were learning about eating disorders, and a patient of our professor agreed to come in and speak with us so that we could learn firsthand how anorexia had affected her life. She was the skinniest person I've ever seen, and hearing her story, how it all started with her trying to eat healthily and work out after going through a divorce, how it quickly became a competition with herself to see how much weight she could lose from week to week, how she would exercise multiple times a day because she felt worthless if she wasn't exercising, and how despite her weight and her family's consistent concern, she continued to restrict eating till it got to the point where she almost died from her blood sugar and blood pressure being too low. If someone didn't come find her and take her to the hospital, the doctors told her that in three more hours, she would have been dead. I see ashes in this, not through any fault of her, but because we live in a world where life became so hard for the patient that she believed that restricting food was the only way she could find solace. So great, life is hard, and there are a lot of ashes and misery out there. Ash Wednesday is here to remind us of that and to remind us of our own sin, the choices we have made that have added some of our own ashes to the world. I've been witness to these ashes somebody can dump on you and the heap of ashes that I myself can add to the world. Some of you may know that, although I may not look it, I suffered from being bullied back in high school. And this guy, he took every opportunity he could to make me feel worthless. From snide comments about my accent back then, to comments about my ineptitude with dating, to other more personal attacks on my character. He took every opportunity he could to shame me publicly and destroy my self-esteem. And day after day, his comments would bear down on me until I withdrew from not only him, but each and every person who cared about me. Cursing the world full of anger and spreading my own ashes around to darken the world. But it was only th through the grace of God and the painstakingly difficult process of forgiveness of both that memorable bully and myself that I was able to begin to rise from the ashes. I had to accept the ashes for what they were, reminders that we are human. And I had to learn to believe Believe that things could be better, that we could be better. I had to choose to consciously seek flames where there are ashes. And eventually, it became reality. And that leads to the good news. We have a way of fanning flames from the ashes. One of the readings today had one of my favorite verses in the Bible. 2 Corinthians 5.21 God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that through him we can become the righteousness of God. God made him
who had no ashes to become our ashes so that we can fan our flames and become fire and burn bright again in love. Scientifically, fanning ashes and embers provides more oxygen so that the fire can burn. And this is precisely what God has done for us. God had provided us with oxygen through Jesus' death and resurrection so that we can not only fan our flames, but fan flames from all the ashes around us. And this is our call as Christians. We are called to fan the flames in the world around us, to turn despair into hope, to turn neglect into love. In short, to turn ashes into fire. And today is a reminder to do that. Because of my own high school experiences, fanning my own fire is a continuous, intentional process. And to this day, there is still that part of me that wants to let that fire die and let the ashes build. But today, I want to choose fire. I want to choose to rise. So let me ask you, where are the ashes in your own life? Do you choose to let them build, or do you want to rekindle those flames? Because once we practice on ourselves, we will be able to fan flames from the major piles of ash in the world around us. One ember of love at a time.